missing out on eggs in the winter time? Not getting so many eggs? Perhaps not even any at all? Does it seem like you're just feeding a flock of freeloaders? How is it that we can expect to find eggs in the shops all year round, but not in our nest boxes? Can we have eggs in winter too? The answer has a lot to do with light. Light is very important to chickens. They even have two different ways of detecting light. First and most obviously, chickens detect light just like we do, using retinal receptors in their eyes. Actually, chickens see things a little differently from how we do. I'll tell you about that in this video. Do check it out if you're interested. Chickens' eyes are most sensitive to light waves at the shorter end of the spectrum, that is blue or even ultraviolet. But as well as seeing with their eyes, chickens can perceive light via photosensitive cells right in their brain. Light waves, especially light of long wavelengths, can pass through the skin and skull of the chicken's head right into her pineal gland and hypothalamus. These two glands are involved in complicated hormonal regulation, including melatonin produced by the pineal gland and gonadotrophin releasing hormones, which are produced by the hypothalamus. The result is that when sufficient light of a suitable wavelength reaches these glands inside a chicken's head, that tells her it's time to lay an egg. At a bare minimum, in order to lay eggs, a hen needs 12 hours of daylight each day. Hens will be at their top egg laying productivity when there are between 14 and 16 hours of daylight each day. In nature, of course, daylight hours vary throughout the year. In spring, the days get longer. Those long hours of daylight stimulate the hen to lay eggs and hopefully hatch baby chicks that will grow in the warm days of summer when food is plentiful. In autumn, the days get shorter. Egg production tails away. The chickens molt their old feathers and grow new ones to keep them well insulated throughout the winter, ready for next spring. But we humans aren't inclined to just let Mother Nature take her course. We want to have eggs all year round, not just enough to raise the chicks for next year, but enough to have on our breakfast plates all year round. And the answer to that is, let there be light. The number of hours of daylight that your chicken gets depends on the time of year and where in the world you live. Countries near the equator, like Singapore, get pretty close to 12 hours of daylight each day all year round. In Manila or Bangkok or Mumbai, there are only three months of the year with less than 12 hours of daylight each day. And that's probably a lot closer to what chickens really need since chickens were originally developed from wild jungle fowl in Southeast Asia. But in Edinburgh, Scotland, they get 18 hours of daylight in high summer, but only 7 hours in the depths of winter. Scotland has only 7 months of the year that have 12 or more hours of daylight, so for 5 months of the year, chickens who live there are really going to struggle to lay eggs. And although the actual day lengths are not so extreme, that's also true of London, England, and Seattle, Washington, and Houston, Texas, and Durban in South Africa too, although the seasons are the other way around because they're on the other side of the equator. And pretty much all of Australia, and the same here in New Zealand. If you want to find out the daylight hours where you live, you can look it up on this very handy website. For almost all of us, wherever we live for several months of the year, there will not be enough natural daylight to stimulate chickens' egg-laying hormones. So one of the ways that the egg farmers make sure that there are eggs in our shops all year round is to artificially control the light. Now some backyard chicken keepers want to do that too. I'll do another video about 
why some people might or might not want to do that and some of the aspects to take into consideration when you're making your choice. But in this video, I just want to focus on the practicalities. If you decide that you want to have artificial light in your chicken coop, what do you need to consider? It's not just a matter of grabbing the nearest light and turning it on. However, the light you are most likely to have at hand is an LED bulb. And LEDs are actually the best option for supplemental light for chickens. LEDs are readily available, fairly inexpensive these days, provide good uniform light, are economical with electricity, robust and reliable, can be used with a dimmer to control the light intensity, and come in a range of colours. More about that later. Incandescent light bulbs are not so common these days and may even be prohibited where you live. They do provide suitable light and can be used with dimmers, but they get hot, which is risky in the chicken coop situation. So fluorescent lights sound good. They're readily available, energy efficient, and don't get very hot. In fact, many websites will give recommendations for fluorescent lights, but please don't use them around your chickens. All fluorescent lights require a ballast to stop the light creating reaction from simply blowing out of control. This ballast modulates the electrical current at a relatively low cycle rate, which can make them flicker. Old style fluorescent lights had a cycle rate of around 100 to 120 hertz, which is slow enough that some people can be affected by the flicker. Modern so-called flicker-free fluorescent lights have a much faster cycle rate in the thousands instead of in the hundreds of hertz, so humans don't see any flickering. But chickens do. Chicken's eyesight is so much faster than ours that they don't see the fluorescent light as a steady glow like we do. They can see the flicker. Try to imagine how annoying that would be. Please don't use fluorescent lights by your chickens. Even more importantly, never use Teflon coated bulbs around your chickens. They don't just give your chickens a headache, they kill. These bulbs have a coating of polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE, to make them shatter resistant. Light bulbs coated in PTFE may be called Teflon coated, Tef coat, Rulon, Chemfloor, Rough Surface, Protective coated, or even Safety coated. When PTFE gets hot, it releases toxic fumes, including carbonyl fluoride, tetrafluoroethylene, monofluoroacetic acid, hydrofluoric acid, and perfluoroisobutane. For humans, these gases generally cause, at worst, only mild flu-like symptoms and are not particularly dangerous. In fact, the US FDA now requires that lights used in the food service industry must be PFTE coated because they are so much less likely to shatter. But chickens and other birds are at much greater danger from the toxic fumes emitted by hot Teflon because they have a much more efficient respiratory system than humans. I just made a video about that. The danger of PFTE to birds has been well documented in the literature since at least 1973. Many of the case reports have involved domestic pet birds such as cockatiels, budgerigars and parakeets because these are the birds that are most often kept in our kitchens and living spaces. As recently as 2012, 68 baby chickens in an animal laboratory near Ann Arbor, Michigan died because some, only about half, of the lights in the lab were replaced with PFTE coated bulbs. Until I started researching this video, I'd never heard of Teflon coated bulbs, but because they are shatter resistant, they are now becoming much more common. So make sure whatever bulbs you're buying to have around your chickens are not PTFE coated. So the best kind of light bulbs are LED. 
what color should they be? Remember we said it's the light of long wavelength that is the red end of the spectrum that best penetrates the chicken's skull to her pineal gland and hypothalamus. And it does seem to be true that it's long wavelength light, that is red light, that works on these glands. Experiments in 2014 at the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada I hope I pronounced Guelph correctly. These experiments showed that chickens came into lay earlier and laid more eggs if they were kept under red or white light, whereas green light actually decreased their egg production. So it seems that it's red light that turns on the egg laying hormones. Why not just use a red light? Bear in mind that the hormonal effects are the effects of light penetrating to the photoreceptors in her brain. But chickens also see with their eyes. And chickens don't see red light very well. If your chickens are awake and producing eggs, they also need to be able to see their way to the food and water and the nest boxes. So the ideal color of light to use is a white light that includes 33% red, that is between 2000 and 3000 Kelvin on the color temperature spectrum, or what we generally call a warm white light. The next question is, how bright should it be? The official answer is 50 lumens, or five lux at chicken level. When I tried to work out quite what that means, it really led me down a rabbit hole of lumens and lux and foot candles and wondering what is the distance between the light bulb and a chicken. The correct brightness will be achieved by a 40 watt bulb, seven feet off the floor of a 10 foot by 10 foot chicken coop. In other words, a 450 lumens bulb, two meters above a 10 square meter chicken coop. Of course, your calculations need to be adjusted for the height of your roof and the area of the floor of your chicken coop. But you don't need to go there. From a practical point of view, your chickens just need enough light to read a newspaper by. Mmm, that's you reading the paper, not the chickens. Oh, for heaven's sake, just make it a light that's bright enough to read by, but not dazzlingly bright. Very bright light can result in aggression and unwanted behaviors like feather picking. So just a comfortable reading light. Good, that's cleared that up. Now, where should we put these lights? The light should be well spread around the whole coop, especially the areas around the feed and water. Your chickens might not be reading, but they do want to see to eat and drink. And yes, if you're adding supplemental light, you do want your chickens to be active normally as they would in daylight, not just sitting still on their perches under the lights and getting bored and hungry. A good spread of light is easier to achieve with several low wattage bulbs spread around rather than one bright bulb in the center of the coop. Or even better, are LED strip lights. But as usual, the nesting boxes should be a little bit dimmer. No bright lights in there, please. It's not a stage. Laying eggs is a private activity. And as well as considering your chickens, have some consideration for your neighbors and try not to have any lights where they will cause a nuisance. If the light spreads outside, cover it from above so it doesn't contribute to light pollution. In fact, light shades are always a good idea to help keep the lights from becoming dusty and therefore dim. Okay, are we ready to turn those lights on? No, not quite, because you don't just turn the lights on and leave them on. Chickens need their sleep just like we do, ideally about nine hours of darkness each night. In fact, studies have shown that more than 17 hours of light each day actually decreases egg production. So the lights have to come on and go out every day. And you're almost certainly going to need an automatic timer 
because once you start adding extra light, you must not decrease the total hours of light or your poor hen's hormones will get disrupted, they will go into a molt and stop laying. You will need a timer to turn those lights on and off reliably every day. And think about power cuts. Have a backup plan so that unplanned disruptions to your electricity supply don't ruin the whole arrangement. You do still need to be around to check that the bulbs haven't blown or for any other hiccup. That's another good reason to have multiple weaker bulbs rather than just one bright one. So when to set the timer for? You want to aim for the lights to come on before the sun comes up and then go off once the daylight is bright enough. Extending the day into the early hours of the morning this way is best because at the end of the day the chickens will be naturally cued by the gathering dusk to go into their coop for the night before it gets too dark for them to see their way. If you use lights in the evening, the chickens could get caught out when the lights go out and suddenly plunge them into blackness. Now remember, you want to keep the total hours of light between 14 and 16 in total. So you will need to adjust your timer as the natural sunset time changes. Simply find your sunset time and count backwards 15 hours to calculate the time your lights should turn on. And recheck and adjust that time weekly. And if it happens to be already winter when you decide to add artificial light to your coop, make the change gradually. First have the lights come on around sunrise and then set them 45 minutes earlier each week until you've reached the goal of 15 hours a day. And that's pretty much what you need to do to provide supplemental light for your chickens. Of course, there are a couple of safety considerations. Make sure the bulbs are kept dry to reduce the likelihood of them blowing because if a bulb shatters, you could have broken glass strewn all around your chicken coop. Check that your bulbs and wiring are not hot and not near any flammable material such as straw or shavings. Make sure they are well attached and secure. And make sure the wiring isn't accessible to your chickens. You don't want them pecking at the wires or perching on them. And if you have all of this sorted, you will have enough light to keep your chickens laying for several months of the year, but no, not all year round. Just leaving hens living on a 15 hour day for all of their adult life is not going to work. With the commercial hybrid hens, it does work for the first year or so, but by then the hens are worn out and need a rest from laying to molt and refresh their metabolism. The commercial egg farmers get around this by simply replacing those hens with young ones every year. If you want to keep your flock longer than that, you need to give them a short winter holiday of at least a couple of months every year. Ideally, you should let this happen in autumn, so the chickens molt and have regrown their new feathers before the coldest winter months. Then you bring in an early spring for them, introducing the artificial light in the mornings, at first to make a day that's 11 hours long. Leave it at that for four weeks to let their hormones get into gear, and then increase the day length by half an hour each week until you get to 15 hours. Remember to delay the timer as real spring begins and the sunsets get later, so you keep to your target day length. <laughs> and that optimal number of lighting hours is going to encourage your chickens to lay at their very best, so you get to enjoy those yummy eggs more often. Thank you chickens, and thank you for watching. Bye for now, see you next time. to encourage your chickens to lay at their very best. And that optimal number of... Hush! Every time I talk, you talk. 
And if you have all of this sorted... <laughs> And that's pretty much what you need to do to provide supplemental light for your chickens. So if it's light, oh, will you please be quiet?